क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग आवर प्रीवियस टॉपिक्स तो वैसे कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं आप इतना अच्छा पढ़ाते हैं ना कोई सवाल ही नहीं उठता है क्वेश्चन करने का नहीं सर एक्चुअली सर प्रैक्टिस नहीं कर पाया सर अच्छा थोड़ा लैब लैब एक्सप्लेन कर सर सर थोड़ा लैब एक्सप्लेन कर कल 9 बजे तक क्लास था यस सर 8 बजे तक क्वेश्चन कोई नहीं कोई क्वेश्चन हो ही नहीं तो इस उम्र में नहीं पढ़ोगे तो कब पढ़ोगे नहीं सर बहुत फास्ट है सर बहुत फास्ट है सीनियर सिटीजन आज 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 भी आज भी सर नहीं हो रहा सर आज भी बहुत क्लास है सर बेटा ना रहेगा रैम ना रहेगा रोम हार्ड डिस्क क्रैश हो जाएगा तब क्या करोगे अभी पढ़ ले हाँ सर सर बहुत पढ़ा कल लेकिन सर उस, उसके लिए टाइम नहीं मिला सर बहुत क्लासेस था सर कल ठीक है मेरे साथ और सर लैब भी नहीं सर मैं मैं पढ़ूंगा मैं पढ़ूंगा सर मैं पढ़ूंगा मेरे साथ भी के लिए तुझे टाइम नहीं मिलता है बाकी सब साथ के लिए है पहले से सर बहुत लैब यही बात सब लोग बोलते हैं सर यही बात देखना पड़ता है सर टाइम को सर एज्यूम नहीं कर सकते सर मैंने सोचा था की एक घंटे में हो जाएगा लेकिन नहीं हुआ सर रिपीट द सेम थिंग फॉर एवरी क्लास टीचर लैब में जाके बोलते हैं सर मैकेनिक तो है आपको पता नहीं है कितना टाइम लग जाता है समझ में नहीं सर ये पहले वाला लैब था इसलिए इलेक्ट्रिकल के टीचर है तो वो पैतालीस मिनट क्लास एक्सटेंड कर देते हैं हाँ कभी 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 लेना पड़ता है ट्रांसम हाँ सर एक सर्कुलर प्लेन लेना था सर शायद हाँ तो उसमें तीन अननोन मेंबर्स आते हैं व्हिच आर नॉन कॉन्करेंट इफ यू टेक द जॉइंट्स ए बी और सी देन दीज आर कॉन्करेंट फोर्सेस यू कैन नॉट सॉल्व फॉर थ्री अननोन ओनली टू यू कैन ट्राई बट दैट इज आल्सो द रिलेशन बिटवीन वन एंड अदर टू एटसेट्रा बट व्हेन यू कैन से दैट सर्कुलर सेक्शन यू आर कटिंग थ्री मेंबर्स व्हिच आर नॉन कॉन्करेंट सो दिमाग लगाओ बेटा हो जाएगा ठीक है और okay, sir, try, ये टीमोशन का प्रॉब्लम है उसमें आंसर भी दिया हुआ है यू कैन चेक वेदर यू आर डूइंग करेक्टली और नॉट ओके सर सर इफ दैट थिकनेस ऑफ द प्लेन इज वेरिएबल देन हाउ विल सॉल्व द सेंट्रेड वी विल नॉट सॉल्व किसने कहा कि सॉल्व करना ही है और थिकनेस यूनिफॉर्म भी है तब भी आप सॉल्व नहीं कर पाओगे if the thickness is uh, if the area of the plate is quite big like a city and a different location different g values are acting so volume multiplied by that unit weight it varies so volume multiplied by rho g volume multiplied by rho g g1 g2 g3 at different places 1 2 and 3 so naturally you cannot say that now same uniform thickness plate some portion is made of bronze some portion made of silver some portion made of gold गोल्ड ही क्यों प्लेटिनम भी लगा लेते हैं ज्योमेट्रिकल शेप वेन देर इज नो थिकनेस देर कैनोट बी एनी वॉल्यूम वेन देर इज नो वॉल्यूम देर कैनोट बी एनी वेट सो सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी का कोई सवाल ही नहीं उठता है सो दैट्स वाई दिस एरिया प्रॉपर्टी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट okay so i am rather uh, rather uh, happy so that you thought uh, to that much extent okay so aise lage raho and uh, uh, just continue inspiring your batchmates okay ye jo social media hota hai usme sirf idhar utar ke baatein share mat karo aur kuch problem share karo logo ke sath okay so do you uh, find any blank page shared there और ब्लैंक पेज दिखता कि नहीं ये बता यस सर यस सर ओके यस सर सो नाउ व्हाट अबाउट दिस डायग्राम याद आया 
we started we started with this thing xyz and in this xy plane we consider two locations x1 was the point 1 having coordinates x1 y1 at point 2 having coordinates x2 y2 two forces are acting parallel to z axis so f1 at point 1 and f2 at point 2 those values are not same how to find out the location of the center location of their uh, other through which the resultant is passing now very easily you can find the resultant that is summation of these two forces f1 and f2 those are acting parallel to this in the same direction so it is f1 plus f2 if f2 is acting in along positive direction of z so it should be either f1 minus f2 or f2 minus f1 whatever convenient for you you can say in that way now how to find out this location through which the resultant is acting using the moment equation that is individual moment of f1 and f2 make their algebraic summation it will be the moment of the force f about that same reference line whether y line or x axis line that way. so we extended this thing and found these expressions these are the moments of the resultant force of the individual forces so it is sigma fi uh, f fi xi divided by sigma fi and yc is sigma fi yi divided by sigma now this is for two forces now if by any chance these two forces are of magnitude f1 and f1 then f1 this is also f1 this is f1 this is f1 so in the numerator it is coming as f1 multiplied by x1 plus x2 divided by twice f1 so for simplification what we will get x1 plus x2 by 2 x1 plus x2 divided by 2 that is at the middle of these two points 1 and 2 you connect this and get the midpoint of that line connecting point 1 and point 2 so that is the coordinate xc similarly yc also so that thing is very important please remember if two forces are equal then their midpoint will be the location through which the resultant force of these two equal forces are passing now then we extended this idea for a thin uniform thickness plate where individual weights are acting through different points we can consider a definite shape or very infinitesimally small now sometime you will find this notation wi is uh, just to hold a minute okay so it may be finite weight or it may be infinitesimally small weight the expression will come either summation wi xi divided by summation wi or summation delta wi multiplied by xi divided by summation delta wi ultimately denominator will give you the total weight now considering a finite shape of this element or a very small size of this element there is a difference if we consider a finite shape suppose a rectangle we subdivide the whole thing like a graph paper very small unit and we consider one unit there here now what about the location indicated by that distance xi definitely this xi will be the middle of this element of finite shape and if this element is very small then that location and its individual center of gravity those are at the same place assume to be for limiting value 
So these things are very important to understand and we extended this part and definitely you have seen that expression instead of summation wi xi divided by summation wi we used integral x dw divided by integral dw for that limit uh, anyway we uh, erase this additional information part you can very easily understand and visualize okay now this was the expression to determine that now this is corresponding to the location of the center of gravity where that this force due to gravity is there and that is located at the middle plane here also with reference to the middle plane the half thickness plate above and half thickness plate below have the same weight that is w divided by 2 w divided by 2 and similarly those two are acting as equal parallel forces and definitely the middle point of these two half w half w is lying on this central plane or middle plane of this uniform thickness t and assuming g is uniform material property is uniform its material density is uniform everywhere it is same now after that we discussed about this term a on the surface we consider a finite area ai it may be infinite infinite small element delta ai also but if we consider this prismatic element just hold a minute so along the thickness there will be if this is the circular shape naturally we will find a cylindrical element if it is very small square or rectangle then it will be this prismatic element it may be very small this is on the surface it is on the surface this is along the thickness so at the middle plane there will be the center of gravity for this element weight is area multiplied by this thickness multiply that is the volume that multiplied by the specific density or the weight density or specific weight whatever you like to uh, express it that is the term rho g rho is the mass density or in compact form it is gamma okay so we have used that and finally we arrived to this simplified expression where only area things are there these are area and area cannot have any weight property so it is some mathematical equivalence for some plane figure here for this particular case that plane figure is the middle plane of this uniform thickness plate so this we discussed and in short centroid of plane figure for divided in finite element finite number of elements a1 x1 a2 x2 a3 x3 etc or a very small elements for them the limit we apply integral x d over integral d and integral y d over integral d next this is something new instead of that plane figure it is a plane curve we have drawn a curve in xy plane it has got some uh, lateral size that means it has got some thickness it has got some definite diameter suppose it is a thick wire okay maybe uh, two millimeter diameter wire bent in this shape now we consider a very small length of that instead of considering that small area of the previous example it is considered to be a very small area it may be li if it is some finite length if it is very small length it can be delta li 
we apply limit, it will be ultimately come in the form of DL. And individual moment of these elements corresponding to their weights, those will be giving us this identical or equivalent expression for the previous case. So instead of integral XDA over integral DA, it will be integral XDL over integral DL, where in the denominator integral DL is the total length of the curve. Done? All muted, hai kya? Kuch nahi pata rahe? Yeah, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, one thing. When you are talking about the weight, what about the weight of this element? The length multiplied by its cross sectional area. If it is a rod of circular cross section, naturally, when you consider the cross section, it will be coming like this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this cross section is a circle. So area of this circle multiplied by the length Li, which will be the volume of this prismatic element. Then that volume multiplied by weight density gamma, that you get the weight. And when you simplify, you will find that the center of gravity is located on that geometrical axis of this curved line. So that is the center line. So for each cross section, we'll identify the center. For each such cross section circle, identify the center. And all these centers, when you join, that center line will hold the center of gravity of this uniform diameter. Well, okay, but this is the notation or symbol for center line from your first plate of drawing. Now, next thing, the similar expression we can get for centroid of plane curve, and that is also very important. We must understand that these are area property and length property. That means simply it is a geometrical property without having any essence of weight or force due to gravity. Okay. And in short, this is that location of the centroid. For finite elements, individual lengths are considered and individual centroids are considered using that symmetry. Otherwise, if it is a general shape, we can go for very minute subdivision for those infinitesimally small elemental lengths, integral XDL over integral DL is the co X coordinate of the centroid for the plane curve. Similarly, Y coordinate of the centroid of the plane curve is integral Y DL divided by integral DL. Any question regarding this? There should not be any question. Things are a very primary, basic. So elementary. Yeah, yes, sir. Ah, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we ek famous dialogue tha. Jab wo Watson ko batate the na, it's elementary Watson. So it's something like that. It's elementary. Now, this thing. We consider a plate. Uh, uh, not not a plate. This is a geometrical figure, a plane figure, which have only this. Anyway, uh, we are comfortable with weights. We consider a 
uh, very thin uniform thickness plate having some weight. Now, when we consider any element of area DA, what we do, we consider if it is possible another mirror image element. So weight of this element DA multiplied by thickness T multiplied by gamma, weight of this element is DA prime multiplied by T multiplied by gamma. These two are the weights of these two pairs of elements. Now, what about the location through which the resultant of these two mirror image uh, elements are acting definitely at their midpoint. And if there is some line of symmetry like this, then definitely if we consider the all right hand side elements and consider the corresponding mirror image locations on the other side, then definitely for each and every such pair of elements coming their resultant located along this line y so infinite number of elements on right hand side and correspondingly some image on the left hand side every such combination will give us that resultant of these two elemental forces along this line y y along this axis y along this axis y along this axis y ultimately the whole thing if we consider the right hand portion and the left hand portion two half weights half w and half w are acting at identical distances from this line of symmetry so from observation we can say that centroid for this plane figure or center of gravity of this uniform thickness plate is located along this y axis when the plate is placed in this xy plane done next diagram very familiar. For this kind of suppose a triangle, so for each and every uh, such element on right hand side, on left hand side, or pairs of elements, and if we can identify a line of symmetry, then definitely suppose for, to start with, we consider one uh, equilateral triangle. So this is what about this line BB prime? This is one median. So center of gravity or centroid is located along this line of symmetry. Similarly, if we consider the element one on this side and element one on this side, mirror image location with a reference to this axis DD prime. So in that case, center of that, or the location for that reference, that is the uh, resultant of these two forces, these two weights, or these two uh, representative area are located on this. So similarly, this line is also holding the centroid. And definitely to satisfy that condition, that centroid is located along this line of symmetry as well as along this line of symmetry. So this is the only possibility, this point of intersection, that this is the location of the centroid. Similarly, if we have so there also it will satisfy this thing. And if this triangle is not of such regular shape, uh, naturally we need to think it in some different way. And I will discuss about that way how we think about that. OK. Suppose. We have a triangle like this. No such a simple shape, but one thing we can say that if we consider a very thin strip like this. This thickness is so small that this uh, inclined length are not uh, making any uh, effect, gross effect in our calculation. Now, what about the weight of this element? It is acting through the middle. That we can say from a straight line. If we consider 
a straight line which is now we can subdivide in two equal parts in this way then what about the individual weights of this half length half length if the weight is w so half w half w are acting at these two locations and definitely the resultant force is acting at that middle point yes sir okay yes sir yes sir so a similar thing we can apply here also that the centroid of this line element or weight of this line element it is acting here now if we consider one more such element suppose it is somewhere here and the corresponding centroid or center of gravity will be located <coughs> at its midpoint so ultimately or all such individual strips those are located at the middle point and what is the criteria that criteria is that there will be a center line connecting all these central points and finally this line satisfies that criteria so centroid is located along this line now what about the name of this line sir median it is median so this is the middle point of this base if i consider another edge of this triangle and draw this median just hold a minute beta this line also satisfy that criteria the centroid of this triangular element triangular plate is a triangular area if it is plate it will be center of gravity it is located on this line also so this is the location which satisfies both these thing so point of intersection of two centroids will give us that well known that famous location from your school level that you know that is the center of gravity of a triangle or centroid of a triangular figure fine now if we have a combination of two such things how we can apply this that we will see now in the previous figure if we subdivide the right hand side in two elements perpendicular to x axis and subdividing this area in two standard figures so for these two lines here we get one triangle we get mirror image triangle on the other side now if we draw the center, draw the medians any two medians of these two triangles naturally it will be at the one third distance from the base and on the middle uh, on on the median uh, maybe it is somewhere here yes sir okay
and that mirror image point of this centroid will be here. But definitely this location will be the resultant of these two individual mirror image weights. So finally we get that the centroid or central gravity is located on this y axis, which is the line of symmetry. But the thing what we are getting here, that is how to calculate that location using that basic idea of for some simple figures. So the midpoint, sir. This is the midpoint of the two middle point of the line joining two points, two centers. Middle point points. of the line, but if we do not have that thing given, suppose, uh, sorry, uh, let me erase this thing. So this is the original thing. Now, by observation, can you say what is the location C? Of course, it is along the line Y axis, but what is the exact location? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here or where? So to do that, we utilize the idea of this symmetry, one for this rectangular or this kind of thing, where there are two lines of symmetry. So for those two lines of symmetry or this kind of two lines of such midpoints, uh, the medians, we can identify the individual centroids of the elements one and two. Now, once we have those elements one and two, we proceed in this way. Just a minute, I will redraw the figure. Done in four parts. Now, when these are subdivided in this way, what about the centroid of the triangles? It is at one third height and along any median. So, draw any median. Suppose this is the middle of the base and we connect with this vertex. And at one third height, we identify this centroid. Now, what about this rectangle? It is along this line of symmetry. As well as it is along this line of symmetry. So this is the centroid for this rectangular part. And if we name these as element one and it is element two, if the base distances are B1 and B2, if this height is h, then what about the area of the ele finite element 1? What about the area of the finite element 2? Sir, half into b2 into h. Done. Now, what about the individual locations of the centroid or center of gravity C1 and C2? Because ultimately, the weight of the portion 1 of this plate is passing through this C1, which is the individual center of gravity. Here also, through this individual center of gravity, the weight of this triangle is acting. But these two are separate forces. And these two separate forces, if we consider A1 multiplied by a thickness multiplied with gamma or A2 multiplied with thickness multiplied with gamma or cancelling from numerator, denominator, both these terms, we get the identical mathematical uh, thing that is the area property. Now, ultimately, you will find the xc is zero. Okay. 
because it is along y axis. But what about y c? It will be a one y one plus a two y two divided by a one plus a two. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So very important thing if it is done, then we can move forward. Sir, why is equal to zero? Sir, please explain. Sir, x x equal to zero. Hey, better, कोई इनको समझा दे. Why x is equal to zero? No, it is symmetric about y-axis. That is why. Yes, sir. It is symmetric. Symmetric है y y के about इसलिए. दोनों okay. part का होगा x is zero. Whatever movement we come across right side will be same as that of left side. Only thing, this whole thing will be multiplied by two. That is twice a one y one, twice a two y two, twice a one plus twice a two. Only that thing. Okay, sir. Sir, for we, the we, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. We understand. I understand, sir. Okay, sir. So okay. the centroid of one portion will have the identical centroid on the other side also. And that middle is the resultant centroid. Okay. Even if I there is, so. I only think. So. Okay. So yes, even yes. if there is no such line of symmetry, simply subdivide in comfortable finite zones and use this formula. Summation a i x i divided by summation a i and summation a i y i. Divided by summation a i. That's all. And you can utilize it for many situations, for many different shapes. Just think to subdivide in different components. Any question there? No, sir. But I have some urgent job that you know to take the attendance first. Then we will continue. Take attendance, sir. How many of you are here? One forty-nine, including me. Download attendance list. Uh, is downloaded. Now I will check whether it is showing in my download folder or not. Yes, is there? So for any such shape, you can extend this idea. Whether there is any line of symmetry or not. Now we will do some more thing. What is that? Some more thing I will let you know after some time. But before that, I need to make some diagram. Okay. So I'll.
do you get my intention? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What what is that? All sir, three. you have cut the uh, two uh, rec small rectangular pieces in the main so figure. Some portion has been removed. Okay. And here comes the question of that algebraic summation. Okay. And in that algebraic summation, you have to consider these two parts having negative area. Okay. Yes, sir. That simple change, it will give you that result. Okay. And we can use that uh, line of symmetry. This is biaxially symmetric. It is symmetric about axis DD prime, symmetric about the line BB prime. So this is the point of intersection. The centroid is located here for this plane figure. So do you find any new page here? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Arc. Here is one arc. So how to find out the centroid of that plane curve? It is a simple curve. It is in the form of a circular arc having a constant radius smaller and it is giving that central angle alpha at its center. And for our convenience, we have considered this center as origin and X axis, Y axis are like this. Now, how to utilize that uh, integral X DL over integral DL and integral Y DL over integral DL to find out the centroid of this plane curve? But before that, definitely we can think about this line. Passing to the center and along this line making half alpha, half alpha angle both side. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you just tell me about the circular arc, complete circular arc. If we have one such complete circular arc like this, having this central axis. Now what about the centroid for this arc? This is not a circular area. This is a curve. Due to symmetry, centroid will be coming at the center. That center. That center. Now if we consider only half of this circle, then what about the centroid of this semicircle? So 2R by pi, I think it was. By no, pi. I, am, I, am not ask, I am not asking about that expression. Just the common sense, definitely it will be somewhere yeah. here, not on this, because every individual mirror image pair points about this line of symmetry, if it is 1, 1 dash, 2, 2 dash, three, three dash, etc. So individual centroids are located in this way. So definitely we cannot expect the centroid of this semicircle will be coming on this circumference only. It may be somewhere here. 
but for this thing when we consider the whole circle so this one and this one these two mirror image centroids will give us finally this location but here it is only a part of the circle one thing we know that this is along this line of symmetry okay now we utilize those expressions this is the line of symmetry on along which the centroid will be located and this is the subdivision we consider a small element but one thing why we are considering this reoriented position of this because arbitrarily if it is located in that way some angle theta is here this is some angle theta after that some angle half alpha then some angle half alpha is there to uh, indicate this extent of this plane curve to avoid that we consider this line of symmetry placed along this x axis okay only thing we need to find out the location of the centroid along this line okay now what about this small length dl it is rd theta if we consider any variable location indicated by this angle theta so this length is rd theta then individual centroid for this individual element will be at the middle of this because this length is so small we can consider the individual location of the middle point is the centroid of this small element dl now what about its coordinate x and y this is the y value and this is x value this variable x y indicates the individual location of the centroid of the small elements dl and here comes that expression xc is the integral x dl over integral dl dl is rd theta and individual location for the centroid x is r cosine theta and actually y dl in that way but y dl is ultimately will give us zero because for this location dl we have some mirror image location below the x axis so this part is not required for this particular problem but if our approach was for this general position then definitely we need to consider one element here and at any angle suppose that is uh, beta so theta plus that beta and in that general way definitely that expression will be quite long and some trouble in calculation might be there but this simplification it works very nicely so that along the x axis when you find the distance xc so here that same xc distance will be plotted okay so please understand this part <coughs> dl this is x coordinate and integrate it r r gets cancelled one r remains so twice r divided by alpha sin half alpha now i appreciate the some student was mentioning regarding this formula 2r divided by alpha sin half alpha now in some book you will find the central angle is indicated in the form of twice alpha and that you must remember if it is alpha and alpha so you have to express this half alpha in the form of alpha and express this alpha in the form of twice alpha but from your common sense you can change these things 
uh, very easily. OK. This is for this plane curve. And we can utilize the idea of this plane curve. To determine the centroid for this plane figure. This is a sector of a circle with central angle alpha due to symmetry. Centroid is coming on this X axis. I, I, I'll take just one more minute, not more than that. So. Area element DA is R alpha. You take a screenshot of this and Badme is go to a dance for dinner. So DA is R alpha dear. R alpha is the length. DR is the thickness of that equivalent area element DA. And X is the centroid of this curve. Centroid of this curve is that what we have already determined. It is here. So that distance is. This one, OK? So that X is twice R divided by alpha sine half alpha, and now you simply uh, replace this value in, in this expression. X is 2 R by alpha sine half alpha, and D is R alpha D R. Uh, just uh, simplify it. You will get this famous relation, famous expression 4 R divided by 3 alpha sine half alpha. Very important. So this one. And. This one, so please take screenshots and or from any book also you will get the standard things. So these two things are very important to start with. So circular arc portion of a circle and here is the sector of a circle. OK. So now please join your next class. Uh, I will not bother you. Thank you, sir. Have a nice okay, day, welcome sir. Better. But please yes. invest some capital. That is your time, intelligence, your patience. Yes, sir. Aaj karunga, sir. Aaj time has sir. Aaj, aaj first, first, first. And inspire, yes. inspire, inspire other people. OK. Thank okay, you, sir. sir. Yes, sir. OK, thank sir, you, sir. We contact, meet, sir. We contact Google Meet, sir, to attend our problem, sir. <laughs> Banana.